Okay, thank you. Welcome everyone to this uh, second live case and lecture session um, with live transmission from Fruwai, uh, Beijing. We've got an excellent panel with Bill Fearon, Iron Grantham, Yutaka Yushi, Kim Skisik Kim, Neil Kleiman, SJ Park, no introduction needed, Kyuhyam Sim, Mohammed Sobi, and Chi King and William Cheng. My name is Sia Kolen, I'm from Eindhoven, the Netherlands, and the co-chairs will be Mijung Hong and Simu Park. We're ready to start? I hope we have a good interactive course. Welcome to this uh, session. We're ready for you. Welcome, Dr. Yang. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, the dear chairman, Dr. Hong. Yeah. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, please okay. introduce you your much. team and, and the uh, patient. Here, our team. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Park. Uh, invite us to attended the transmission from Beijing uh, for hospital to the TCGAP. And, uh, our team is, I'm Dr. Yang from hospital here. And uh, here on my right side is Dr. Song. He just uh, come back from the uh, TCT, uh, uh, CRF. Uh, CRF. Uh, my right side is, uh, uh, first side is Dr. Zhu and another Dr. Chen. Chen Jin actually is, uh, is a fellow of the CRF. Uh, uh, today, uh, uh, let the doctor song tell the story. Okay. Hello, everyone. This is the 44 years male patient suffered from angina three months ago, and the angel showed a lifetime man two eyes of disease with syntax force 25. The reverse relation with either a carbid or PCI was recomm recommended by the heart team. And the patient denied any previous MI, MI or PCI or carbid history. And the patient had diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and a current smoker. The clinical diagnosis is stable in China, and the echo shows the normal left, left, uh, left ventricular function. The ejection fraction was 60%. And uh, uh, now, let's uh, Professor Yang introduce the strategy and the angel findings. Now here, let us uh, see the angiogram. Based on the angiogram, please put, put the button. I don't know. Yeah. Back. This is an aerial cranial view, see the left main disease, the right side, and also circumflex distal have a severe stenosis, 80% stenosis, right? Aerial ED is okay, but the publication of the left main is diseased, stenosed. Next. Also, next. Now, the typical uh, publication, to Roman, uh, left main publication lesions. This uh, distal left main, maybe 80 to 90, orifice LED, maybe to 80 to 90, and the right side, or so distal le 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 circumflex is 90, 80 to 90. Next. Now, this is a spiral view. Look at the orifice of the circumflex is over severe stenosed. So, it's a typical uh, uh, publication lesions and, uh, with the Medina 111 type. So, um, uh, because of the most important thing that the left main is big, but the LED in the circumflex is relatively small, so it doesn't match. So we have to do the uh, 
I was the first to see what the big of the size or bigger or size of the LED or circumflex is. Uh, let it, uh, so um, in this situation, we usually use the transradial approach. Uh, we will do the transradial approach uh, for left main uh, disease. Number two standard strategy. What's your opinion about the uh, penalty? Thank you. Yeah, that was, was I was about to ask the panel's opinion. I think what we have learned from the data so far, personally, I do think that uh, um, one strand strategy is most of the times the best strategy, but seeing the severity of the lesion, I personally would prefer a two strand st strategy here. Anyone who has an, any other thoughts in the panel? I think you have a fairly young patient who uh, is a candidate for both bypass surgery and PCI, and so we'd like to mm -hmm. offer an equivalent strategy with physiologically complete revascularization. And before we micro focus on the left main, we also, I think, would need some physiologic assessment on the distal circumflex in the right coronary artery to decide how much work needs to be done today in terms of the left main. A two stent strategy makes perfect sense. Anyone else? I think uh, this patient had a uh, uh, distal left main bifurcation uh, and also has uh, a diffuse disease on the right coronary artery. And uh, I, I agree with uh, this patient is a good candidate for bypass surgery. But uh, if you uh, do uh, intervention, I think uh, we must uh, consider two stand approach. So in that context, yeah, uh, I prefer to use the uh, transfemoral approach. Okay. okay. I think Dr. Okay, Dr. Dr. Young, I want to say, uh, just say hello. I'm SC. Uh, yeah. But uh, good afternoon. Uh, really, thank you for yeah. nice cases. And so, I want to ask uh, from the audience, right? This is a typical uh, main bifurcation and diffuse, you know, disease on the right coronary, three vessel disease. And so, uh, what about the surgery? Would it be better in the would you right your hand? Surgery. Uh, yeah. All right. Yes, PCI? yes. Uh, oh, what about the PCI? Yes, PCI? Uh, surgery is uh, if a hospital surgery is also. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. Even in the. Okay. But the, can, 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 I cannot decide. Can, can, I, can I add? Uh, <laughs> uh, you said that the right coronary is diffusely diseased and non significant. We can look again to the right coronary. I think it's a. It's a diseased uh, right coronary. It's it's co dominant circumflex and right coronary. So it's. If the right coronary is. Uh, the FFR is negligible, it's okay, we can leave the right coronary, but if the right coronary can add to the, to the syntax, uh, would be more not intermediate syntax score. So we can discuss. But if you concentrate only LED and, and, uh, and the circumflex, so I think uh, the question may be the winner, the, the PCI, except that the patient is young, is 44 years. The original, syntax, the original syntax was anything over 50%, so I would count that in the syntax score, and I was assuming that it was counted. So the summary is um, that more than half of the audience uh, would perform a PCI and a, probably a two-strand strategy, but there is a question, maybe you can answer it, how to tackle the right coronary, whether to do first physiological measurements to maybe to alter a little bit the syntax score or your idea about the syntax score and also if you will physiologically approach the uh, distal RCX. Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Park, uh, can you see the uh, 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 IVAS examination before we start? Uh, because uh, the mm -hmm. LED in the circumflex doesn't match with the left, big left main, so we want to know what the size exactly big of the LED in the circumflex is right. now, for reference for our selection of the stand. I agree. In the, yeah, in thank you. Almost all cases, main bifurcation. Yeah, just, uh, uh, so just uh, pull back uh, from the LED middle part. Okay. It's a 3 0 vessel and uh, with uh, mild plug. Size wise, for big vessel, right? Big one. Yeah, now and more and more plug. Eccentric and the lumen becomes smaller. And the same negative remodeling. Down. Natural. 
And we can see the second diagonal just come in from 12 o'clock. Can you hear it? Yeah. Still minimal lumen diameter is too far. And uh, the mm. first uh, diagonal with the some dilated, uh, not that any reason, but coming. And this is surface so coming from 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And this is the distal left main, it's a severe lesion. Right. And uh, the <laughs> media to media is around the 5. Why? Okay. And we also did the, the hours from the second flex and the second flex from the middle part. We can see the hours is also 3 0 vessel in the middle part of the circle with some mm -hmm. 3 0 3 0 14 uh, also mild plaque and eccentric and plaque and reach the orifice of the second flex. This is a uh, hand pullback, no pullback. So, but we measure the orifice of the second flex. Uh, severe lesion with minimal lumen area is only near 1.8. Mm -hmm. What size of the circle uh, on IVC images? Thank you. What size of the vessel at the circle? Circle, circle is uh, about uh, three, uh, three five. Meteor to meteor is three five, but the lumen is uh, two point seven to three point three. So, so I would add that based on the size it's, uh, of that equal to the LED. Yeah, uh, I would bet that based on the size of that left main, uh, you're going to be disappointed with a three millimeter stent in the LAD. I, I think you're going to end up dilating it to something considerably larger when, when all is said and done. Having said that, would you like to comment on over or underestimation of the diameters IVAS versus OCT? Two point five long, you mean? Mm -hmm. Dr. Young, uh, don't you don't you treat the, the distal circle just a little yeah. long? And geographically, well, there is some significant uh, disease. Uh, I'm going to say that I prefer. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, because of the distal left main have severe stenosis disease, so I want to to uh, treat the left main bifurcation first. Then after that, I will. Uh, uh, to the circumflex uh, distal because okay. uh, left main is uh, very important. So which, which technique are you going to use? Are you going to uh, mini crush? Now. So uh, you, you put a stent now I'm, in the... I'm going to uh, step a crush. Now I choose the 30 uh, uh, XL. Give me a test. By 14, 3 by 14. Mm -hmm. uh, let me have a scene. Yeah. What size of the stand? I would say like this, okay. What size? Uh, 3-0. What size? 30 by 14. Okay. Inflation. Inflation. 16. 16. Thank you. Down. Another 16. Thank you. Down. So first, I want to put a second flex first. Then hold the back. Then crush it. Then crush it with the blown. Just a moment. Yeah, crush it with the balloon. Mm. Yeah, 16. Cr crush it the balloon, right? Balloon crush, 16. right? 16. Mm. What size the balloon? Yeah, balloon crush, yeah. Step crush it. Then I would... Uh, well, what size balloon are you yeah. using? Then I would uh, choose the uh, stent. All right. When the 2.5 emerge by 4.15, emerge. And then, a uh, circle flex has already, I, put a, I wanted to put a two stent in the LED because uh, uh, left main is a 4.0 uh, or 5.0 and the LED just a 3.5, uh, just maybe 3.5. So, uh, let me just... Uh, uh, from RU cranial view to see to see uh, uh, where uh, the distal landing zone where it is. 
Uh, yeah. what, what size balloon? Yeah, you could you give, give, give me 3 0 by 18? Size balloon, 2.5 balloon. Okay. I would like to have a 3 0 by 18 XL. 3 0 by 18. So do you owe 18 for, for the for the, the main? The maximum I will use the 4 0 F. Uh, for for no no left main because I have to because uh, uh, left main uh, is bigger at least uh, according to I was uh, nearly four five but the LED just a three O so I have to use the three O in LED then put a four O in the left main. Oh, right. LED was, uh, uh, LED uh, was three five. Company. Could I could I make a small comment here? Uh, I saw five. that you yes. I saw that you pull out the yes. uh, circumflex wire after you crush it with the balloon in the, from the left main. So uh, perhaps I would do it slightly differently. I would like to check an angiogram before I pull back the wire. Just in case I cause yes. the section into the circumflex, then after you crush the stand, it could be difficult to get anything down a crushed stand. 16. 16, sir. So uh, because the uh, uh, circumflex uh, already put a stand there, so not necessary to concern 16. Yeah, but, but what I mean, mean was already uh, stent, so it's uh, it, it could be safer to check an angiogram yeah. before you pull the wire back. Uh, Dr. Young, uh, because there's this step of crash, so I, yeah. Okay, so we, by I was finding the distal. So I have to pull out the circle vaccine. Yeah, according to the I was finding that the distal LED reference yeah. pixel diameter would be almost a four o millimeter. It's a quite a big one, right? Yeah. So uh, why don't you choose the three three o uh, something? Why? Three o, three o, not a four o, but Professor Parker, not not four o. Four o just the left main. Uh, you deploy the uh, first stand on the just precise uh, LED OCTL yeah. part or just crossover, just OCTL part? Could you explain that? No, be, uh, no oh, not right. crossover because, Dr. Park, because of the le uh, left main is 4 or 4.5, too big. Okay. But the LED is not so big. Now we can okay. clearly see that. 4 by 14, that. yeah. 4 by 14, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. <coughs> For, oh, 14, 14. 14. Now, now I will put uh, another 4 0 oh, two left main, 14. See. So, a kind of a you know, balloon crush is ultimately two stand mini crush, right? Oh. Yeah, Park, the, the angle here is wide. Yes, yes, yes. Wide. Mini crush. Between the LED That's and the circumflex. So, why he chose DK crush? I mean, it's a, a step, it's usually a tap. You can make a left main LED and rewiring it after balloon and then you put the stand, uh, b uh, back shot of the balloon in the LED. It's very easy to get it, l rather than the LED crush. In a, in a wide angle, it's easy for this. Do you prefer tap technique for, yes. all right? Because of the angle and the size. Mm. Now this is a 4.0 by 14. Great. Test. Test. So I think connected uh, with the previous stand. Let me un un see it. Overlapping. So. No problem. Too much okay, is that is all right? Uh, overlapping, yeah. Up. Too much overlapping. I don't know. You you can see clearly. Let me pull it back <laughs> a little bit. It's okay. Yeah, give me good, test. Good, much better. Yeah. Okay. Go. Twelve. Just ten. Just ten. 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 Twelve. Twelve. Fourteen. Down. Okay. Thank you. Then I would I would like to pull back a little bit. Then up to sixteen. 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 Down. This is like a pot. a pot. Okay. All right. Now then, uh, I would like to have the BMW. BMW. I will rewiring. Rewiring. Use the circle press. Right. And use the 1.25 balloon. 
wiring to circumflex here. And uh, 1.25 with Tatuna Blong will go. What, what kind of drilling stand do you use? DS. What, what type? What kind of DS? Uh, well, what type of uh, uh, DS? DS is an uh, XL, just domestic one. Domestic one. Oh, domestic one, right. It's uh, ever rolling with the cipher, the C rolling with the cipher, right? Yeah, now I will go to the, go to the uh, spider view. Then I can see clearly the where the direction of the circle box is. Good. Yeah. yeah, I will, no, 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 new one, new one. BMW. Yeah, because the rewiring, I usually use the rewiring, you usually use the BMW and a new one. I like the use a bigger curve. Uh, please prepare the one two point five balloon Tatsuna, please. Yeah, you uh, you regard the, the post dilatation as if it is a pot. Reference you said uh, I'm reference. doing a pot. We go back to the ostial. And you make a 22. Uh, is it this is the pot, or, or ah. pot should be with non compliant balloon? Yeah. Uh, pre dilatation uses non compliant balloon, but post dilatation, I have to use the. Uh, for the uh, rewiring, I usually go to the LED first, uh, just with the tip toward the circle flex, then pull back a little bit. Let it uh, give me a test. It's usually not so, not so difficult. Okay, two point, uh, one to one point two five balloon. So what is it? Tatsuna, I usually use a Tatsuna because it's a very low profile. Does it make any difference in terms of where and you usually, are Because crossing? of the left main, uh, Does it make a difference whether you are crossing in a distal standstill uh, or a middle one or a proximal one? I use use the use the middle one. Yeah, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty, twenty. Yeah, yeah, done. Another 20, 20, 20, 20. Okay, down. 3 0 quantum and uh, 4 0 quantum, please. Now, uh, we presentation successful and I use the 3 0 quantum by 4 15. Go to the second level first, uh, then also use the uh, 4 0 by 4 15. Go to the LED. Then sequential high pressure, then final kissing with a lower pressure. Yeah, so three oh. I would like I like I would like to use the uh, quantum because uh, quantum is a very, very excellent uh, post dilatation balloon with the uh, transradio approach six French guard catheter. Usually I can use the four oh by four five for quantum simultaneously go to the stent. For post dilatation, other bronze cannot. Well, that is difficult to cross. It's not. E it's it's easier to cross. So I like this quantum for transverse approach for uh, post dilatation of the left main stand. Now a four O go to the LED or left main LED. Also quantum by fifteen. 4.0 by 15 quantum. Now you can see that the transradio approach is 600 guiding catheter launcher uh, EBO, and uh, we already have the 3.0 in circumflex. Now 4.0 go to the LED. No difficulties. So the, I just talk here. 
and uh, I will put back my uh, circumflex uh, uh, quantum back uh, 16 no 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 sequential high pressure 16 no 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 16 yeah another maybe more uh, six, 16 again 16 again 16 again 18 18 18 Down, okay. Okay, now LED. LED. LED 16. Kind of a sequential high pressure inflation. Sequential high pressure with the high pressure 18, right. 18. 18. Down. Right. Yeah. And then with the lower, then final kissing with the lower pressure. Okay, great. But so, sometimes some operators made them doing like this from the just the, moment. the PCR group that you do uh, an eight atmosphere for one, 16 for the other, and the reverse, and the, at the end you you okay. you ending by, two. by by two intermediate pressure. Are you doing the same? We do it this way. This one. Yeah. One, one. Four. Okay. Six. High pressure. High pressure. Eight, eight ten, ten, twelve. Pressure. Twelve. Two step kiss. Down. Okay. Great. So the fi final kissing finished. Then I will go to the I was examination. to see uh, how uh, 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 how uh, the opposition it is. Now I will put back the uh, LED 40 blown. Great. And the nitroglycerin, give nitroglycerin and uh, angiogram first, and then final is uh, then I was. Now, so blood pressure is good, ECG is good, and the blood pressure now is 116, uh, 160, and over 100. So I give the uh, intracoronary 200 microgram uh, nitroglycerin. Now I will uh, do the angiogram first. First, Great. maybe another. I would like to choose another one. Are you cranial? Almost perfect. Cranial. Perfect and result. Angiographic uh, result. To, to, to see the. Yeah. Okay. Great. The then con, uh, write uh, are you coral to see circumflex. This is the circumflex. And then I was, please uh, uh, prepare the I was. Okay. So I was, yeah, ready, okay, I was. Wait, uh, it's quite, you know, classic. From uh, this uh, angiographic view, we can see that the uh, left, yeah. Dr. Yang, can you zoom the image more bigger? Yeah. Can you zoom the more bigger, bigger size one? When you look at the, the angiogram in the carolina, there is a little bit more density. Yeah. It means that you, even though you did a crushing stand technique, yeah, that's true. but it, it looks like a, a little bit the, the yeah. too kissing stand-like. It means that there is a, some strut okay. above the, the, uh, the arcing of the cirque. What I mean, uh, let me validate that uh, that is uh, real, real or not is at the IBIS examination. Okay, you gonna say that I was? Yeah, no, it's examination. No, no problem because of the I have the uh, sequential high pressure, uh, 18 atmospheres. So even though it looks like uh, have some problem, but no problem because it's a very post. No, I was uh, from LED to circle uh, breaks. Oh no, 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 to LED, uh, to left man. Let me look at that. Ah, uh, yeah, it's near there. It's near there. Mm -hmm. Four. The three oh three oh three oh stand. Not yet. Hmm? Learn from LED, right? Dr. Young? Is that right? Oh yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Good, yeah. Yeah. The distal stand it's coming. here. It's uh, very opposed. Yeah. Also the extension is good, it's three oh. And uh, 
here maybe a little a little undersized. I think a little undersized because of the eccentric uh, lesion. Yeah. Track burden in the another half is very big, very heavy. And we can see the second diagonal coming. Diagonal is orifice is okay. Mm -hmm. And the uh, proximal part is uh, we can see two layer of the strut. This is four O overlapping the three O stem. Mm -hmm. This is a the orifice of LED is good. There is a there some is stand strut. And the distal dual left main the stand is uh, fully opposed and also well expanded. Yeah, the or proximal edge is okay. Yeah. Finish. Please show us uh, the bifurcation. Uh, only the maybe I the distal part of the stand. Bifurcation. Uh, then yeah, I will yeah, go okay. to the circumflex once again. Left the main, another, okay. another okay. run of the iris. Yeah, once again from circumflex. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is the bifurcation, but uh, but we should change it to the at the twelve yeah, o'clock. Bifurcation area. Watch out the slowly. Yeah, but we should change. Yeah, we should change it to third. Yeah. The Dong Chang. I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. Now I will go to the circumflex the second. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, 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 okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Thank Go you. back. Go back, please. Go back. Yeah. And this is the uh, I was go back from the middle circumflex. Small branch just coming. And uh, so far lumen is okay. Nearly no plug. This stand standard appears is also well expanded and fully opposed. It's uh, it's it's good the three O stand. And uh, we are near the orifice. The so stand is very circular because yeah, of the yeah, high yeah. pressure. This is a, a, a little atmosphere. optical it's of good. the orifice of circ, but we will measure the minimum stand area. Okay, this is the distal left mm -hmm. main. Left main is okay. Right. Overall, the ibis appearance is acceptable, uh, but the uh, one yeah. cut was that there is uh, some stand strut. Alright. Okay. So in terms of a stand, uh, effective stand area will, is will a big enough, right? We will measure the orifice of circ. So and more than six, seven yes, millimeters. Yes, we'll measure the circle. Oh, right. yes. Yes. That is yeah. Good. Yeah. Right. Echo. Yeah. I think the minimum stand area is okay. Five seven. It's a five hundred six. Five seven. And play. Five hundred six millimeter uh, square millimeter. And uh, we can be back, back to see the orifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the after echo our uh, orifice with the yeah. uh, uh, underground several uh, projects. Several projects. So this area cranial view. Look at that. The left main standing is uh, looks a little bit uh, oversized. That means what I want. That means it's very opposed. If uh, if uh, if it uh, looks similar or undersized, that means uh, not not so well for a position. Now here, look at that a little bit oversized, uh, standing a little bit oversized. That's what I want. That means very opposed from angiographically. Yeah. If not so uh, over, uh, oversized, that's I'm mean, I'm really concerned about the wear pose. Yeah, that uh, almost uh, that's all. So uh, if we, we have time, I want to go to the circumflex, uh, put a, another stand. Uh, what's your penalty? Thinking about this. Thank you very much, Dr. Park, uh, Professor. This. Yeah. I think it's an excellent uh, result. 
and, um, and we would go for the uh, circumflex in, unless anyone else has a different opinion. But I think you should treat that too, because that you don't need to do a physiological approach. It looks to me like a 95% lesion, so I would go for standing of the uh, circumflex. Can I ask a question? If the, if the patient go to surgery, are the surgeon going to uh, graft the two OMs or one OM only? If the surgeon is going to do a one OM, so I will leave the distal CX. If he's going to do the two OMs, which is so difficult for the surgeon, I'm going to do to tackle before left main stenting. So, because the right, if he, if he believe that the right coronary is diffuse disease, at a small, you're not going to, to do anything for the right, so you have to complete the CX in two, two arms. This is my, my opinion. I don't know that. Well, I misspoke. I think we should give him a better revascularization than the surgeons can give him. So I'll definitely do the distal circ. And I wouldn't yeah. do FFR yeah. now that I see it's 95%. I, I agree with that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's nothing intermediate about it. <laughs> do the circ. Okay, do the circ. Uh, but in China, in, in, far, yeah, in, in far hospital, we usually use the uh, before we do such kind of uh, lesions, you usually use, uh, uh, have the consultant of a cardiac surgeon. Uh, I think a majority of the patients accept the cardiac surgeon, but some patients, especially, especially young patients, there's just a concern about the uh, surgeon the surgery. And uh, also for the very old patients, their relatives of their daughters, uh, sons are also concerned about that. So we have to do like this. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it happens. Yeah, that's true. Are you going to treat the circumflex? Yes. Okay. I, I would like to treat that, yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh? Okay. If time is up, then, yeah, uh, I will, uh, yeah, good, good word, uh, change your other room. Thank you very much. Okay. Good thank park you. and uh, Good nice. case. And effect of this. Yeah, thank well, you. Well performed. Thank you. We should be online. Well, we had an excellent uh, demonstration from Huai Hospital, but uh, uh, before moving on to the lecture, I still uh, have an idea Hello? of uh, uh, just the one stand uh, from the LAD to the left main, and I might have saved one stand. Uh, looking at the uh, uh, post-procedural uh, IBUS, the LAD size is uh, more than 3.5, actually. That's my comment. And uh, another comment is, uh, uh, with uh, this uh, excellent result, I think the uh, uh, target lesion uh, revascularization rate should be very low. But if we put the multiple stent uh, in diabetic patient, uh, even with the uh, second generation DS, I think uh, uh, adding uh, silostazel on the top of uh, double antiplate therapy uh, probably uh, be beneficial. Uh, that's my comment. And, um, if I could make another comment, I think that uh, just to make your life easier, I probably would have treated the distal circ first. I mean, you can have a lot of trouble once you've done the crush to get another stent through there. And so I think just doing that first might have been a little easier. Yeah, I agree. And okay. In yes. this case, I, I think about the uh, two options. The special one option is a curate. The, the, the first, first LMT and circumflex stenting and KVT and second stent insert the LAD. That's one option. And, and use the DK crush. DK crush is one, uh, uh, the change showed every time the good result. Do we have another case? Is there yes. a next case? Yes. Can you hear us? <laughs> Can you hear us? <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for Hello. the Hello. Did you prepare the another cases for the RIBE? We're on yes. to the next case. This, yes, this is the second case from okay. Flight Hospital. Okay. Go, go ahead. ahead. Second life case from Flight Hospital. Okay, go uh, ahead. Uh, 
uh, I'm Shivo. Uh, I want to say uh, I, I, I want to thank uh, Dr. Park and the organizing committee for inviting us again. And this is a very special case. Just to prepare for the TCTAP this year. Uh, you can see this uh, is not a, a routine uh, PCI practice uh, environment. Actually, we are going to do a robotic assisted PCI today. Uh, Professor Do Kefei, who is the primary operator of this case. Kefei, please introduce. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's a pleasure to take part in the uh, live case of TCTAP 2017. First, I would like to introduce our team. Uh, we can say our bad side of your team. Uh, uh, I have Dr. Drew and Dr. Feng and uh, Dr. Mu here. Also, we have our fellow and the scrub nurse here. And uh, today, uh, this case is very special. It's a robot-assisted yeah. PCI. And uh, so uh, I think, uh, uh, is Aaron there? Uh, yes, I'm here, Cafe. How are, you, how are you today? Uh, I think, uh, hi, hi, I'm fine. Hi, Aaron. Thank you. Aaron. Uh, I think uh, we will show you a, a very short video. I think you can... Uh, no, we don't. We, 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 can, we already canceled the video. Canceled Just the video. Go, go ahead, introduce the case. Okay, okay. And then I, I think uh, uh, I will uh, introduce this case. Uh, can you show me the, the slide? Sarah, please show, show us the show slide. Up. Show up. Yes, yeah, okay. yes. And this is a, a 63 years old gentleman. Uh, he suffered uh, effort on China for three months. Uh, and uh, he had no previous myocardial infarction, previous PCI. Next. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and the risk factor only uh, hyperlipidemia. And the clinical presentation uh, is mm -hmm. stable in China. Next. And uh, UCG showed the ejection fraction is 60%. It's normal. And um, today uh, we, we did a diagnostic angiography again. Uh, would you please uh, show me the, the angiography today? Show us the, okay, today's angiography. Yeah, back, no, no, to today. back to the first one. Back to the angio. Back. From uh, HDE. Yes, uh, from uh, aerial cranial, we can see a very tight lesion uh, at uh, uh, LED osteo, uh, more Next. than ninety percent stenosis. Next one, you can see more clearly from this view. Next, from portal view, we can also uh, find a, a very severe stenosis at the mid circumflex. Is also some torturous lesion, and we also uh, see some plaque at the distal left main. Next. This is better, we can see more clearly. Actually, it's a trifurcation. Yeah. Uh, today, our target lesion is uh, mid uh, circumflex and uh, osteo LED. And uh, is there any suggestion and comment from the panel? Anyone? Well, I personally uh, would start, and I wonder what the others would do to do this. Uh, to Put two wires, one in the LED, one in the circumflex, do the circumflex, and then uh, one stand LED to the main, <coughs> main. I don't know whether anyone has any other ID. So then we're wondering what you have done. The, uh, personally, I think it's a, this is a robotic PCI, PCI so the the, I think that uh, the you'd better go ahead. Uh, I, uh, I'd like to see that the robotic procedure more okay, than I the see. discussion about that the, <laughs> the uh, treatment strategy is there really something new. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So maybe yeah, we okay. can yeah. go ahead. Yeah, uh, 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 you can see uh, I and the Professor Shibo, we are sitting behind a, a working station. Uh, in the working station, we can see the screen, we can monitor the angiography, the screen. And also we have a control console, and uh, there are uh, three three joysticks here. And, uh, we can uh, manipulate a wire, stand to balloon, and even guiding catheter. And um, and on the on the other side, uh, uh, beside uh, beside the uh, bed, we have a uh, bedside uh, unit. 
uh, including a remote reach arm and the robot driver and a single-use cassette. And, uh, and my uh, bedside team will help me to load the other device. I will control, manipulate all the device from here. Okay, go ahead. Maybe you can introduce. Yeah. The, so go ahead. Yeah, go Just ahead. Okay. And uh, today, uh, we, we, we first uh, we choose the uh, we treat the system that the leader first. Next. And we use the transradio approach and use the EBU 3.5 and uh, a thin blue wire uh, I manip uh, manipulated the thin blue this wire. This is uh, a uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, slowly, slowly. It's, uh, I do the whole, uh, whole thing robotically across the lead, uh, a torturous lead and the pre dilatation and then next one. Next. 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 When I want to deliver the, uh, the stenting to the uh, mid circumflex, I, I feel, uh, we feel some resistance. And then I use the, the green dry stick uh, to deep sit in the guiding catheter and uh, get more backup. And I uh, successfully deliver the stent to the lesion part. Next one. So Dr. Doe, uh, I would want to highlight... This is the whole, uh, the whole thing when I deliver. Yeah. I would want to highlight that he's using the new second generation GRX device and there are three knobs on the console. The one on the left advances uh -huh. uh, the balloon. The one in the middle advances and retracts yeah. the wire and causes and can allow wire rotation. Yeah. And the green knob on the right, the green joystick on the right, can, gives you guide catheter yeah. control, which is the major new advantage <coughs> of the GRX yeah. system. And so when he needed to deep seed, he could do that without having to get up from his comfortable yeah. chair. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your... Thank you. <laughs> Aaron, thank you. <laughs> okay, next one. I deployed this dent uh, at uh, 16 atmosphere. Next. It's a thrill or 2.5? 2.5, but uh, okay. uh, 16 atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Next. And this is the result of circumflex lesion. Next one, and uh, I think uh, the 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 most challenging thing today is to to wire the osteo LAD. And I used the uh, assume balloon, and uh, and my assist uh, made the two curves from the tip of the uh, uh, wire, and uh, I used the joystick uh, uh, rotate it and uh, find the right direction and push it, and finally uh, successfully wiring the LAD. Next, next. Okay, next, next, next. And then I, I, I choose a two oblong to dilate the uh, LED osteo lesion a little bit. Next. <coughs> okay, here is uh, where we are. And uh, uh, can you show me the spider wheel after the pre dilatation? Next one. Okay, is there any suggestion for the front panel? Uh, so uh, our strategy is very simple, just to put a full stand from LED crossover a second fly <coughs> back to mm -hmm. left main and with uh, maybe four, four, five or even five millimeter short balloon for pop. Yeah. So I think the panel agrees with the strategy. We, we would like to see some robotic action. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Just go ahead. And actually, uh, uh, we want to dilate the osteo uh, lesion use two five balloon again. Okay. Uh, 再往, uh, 给我把那个guiding漏出来多一点, 把guiding漏出来多一点. Okay. Good. So with his left hand, he's pushing on the turbo button. This allows extra fast advancement through the guide, and then it'll release the turbo to advance the device. Literally millimeter by millimeter. Up above the joystick is a touch screen that he can use to click one millimeter at a time. It also has a measurement function. Are you going to show them how to measure a lesion, Cafe? 
Yes, I, I will show you a uh, married lesion in use of a balloon. Does the system automatically control the wire position, or you First, have to uh, I deliver use the, another? The uh, a little bit, uh, does the system talk? automatically a control test. the wire? Yes. yes. So when you have a two wires, the, the circumflex down. wire yeah. is now parked on the side of the cassette. And I use the, marker the tone, active uh, wire is the LED the wire. You can move the LED wire in and out. So he's advanced the balloon beyond the lesion and then pulled back a couple of millimeters to take the slack out. out now he's clicking back millimeter I'll by millimeter. He resets it to zero, clicks back I'll millimeter by, by millimeter. You get a very precise I'll lesion length assessment. Uh, Aaron? Yes. Uh, I have measured uh, the lesion length uh, is uh, 16, uh, 16 milliliter. Okay. So we choose a 4 0 by 18 stent. Okay. Perfect. We, we, we've done several experiments in animals to like reproduce that. measurements and, um, and with Maybe five operators measuring focus. the same distance, plus or minus one millimeter. Very precise measurements with a new device. The old device had some wire slippage, uh, some device slippage, and that problem's been solved. So you can really rely on these measurements. So, so is the circ wire still under control of the unit? No, the circ wire is passively locked in place. There's a little clip that'll hold it for you, so you and your fellow can't pull it out. <coughs> so you have, you mean my fellow can't pull it out. So you haven't disengaged it? Correct. Uh, it, it controls the, wi the wire and the guiding, you know. The, the wire, the, guiding. the balloon, the guide. and the guide. But the new one is the guiding, because uh, I think the last version was with no Correct. guiding. Correct. Guide catheter control is the, uh, the major, one of the major advances mm. in the GRX, the second generation device. There are some features up here on the console the, uh, that are uh, 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 a touch screen that gives the, uh, the assistant step-by-step -step instructions that have also improved the setup time. There used to be a problem with long setup time, and that's been diminished slightly significantly with the uh, new touch screen instructions. What about CTOs? The device is not compatible with over-the-wire gear, so it's usable only in very simple, straightforward, single-wire CTOs, functional CTOs. It's used in a hybrid way. Uh, after crossing the CTO, you can then step away earlier from the case and finish the case, do the, the, ballooning, the, wire, uh, the ballooning and the stenting uh, robotically. Cindy Grimes has been a real cha champion of that in Detroit. So Aaron, when he set this up, it, he put two wires into it initially? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So you advance one wire to the target. You take that out of the drive track. You, you lift up the cassette top. You pull that out of the cassette. You park it. You insert the second wire. And then you drive that robot. Hey, so first one goes in, gets set, parked. Take them yep. The second wire then goes Take in. Them. Correct. So, so like you me. have to go in there and. Uh, or your park. assistant. Your assistant right. does all that. So that uh, I'm trying to get my 10,000 steps. The guide wire holder is like an extra set of hands. The guide wire holder is under the wire. I'm just curious, so uh, for those who have uh, such experience, how good is the control of the wire using this robotic device? How good is the wire maneuverability under this uh, robotic control? I'm not sure what comparison I would use, but I will tell you it'll take you about two cases before you can manipulate a guide wire anywhere in the coronary system you want it to go. It's very, it's very intuitive device. It's not hard to figure out. It really is. Uh, you know, easy to learn, and the control is literally millimeter by millimeter. You can control the arc of the spin on the wire, and you can control the um, forward and backward motion by very small degrees. So you have an assistant in the catheter. How many people uh, need to be present in the catheter? You really just need a scrub tech who's facile with the device, and, and uh, it, it really helps to have a champion who's interested in doing it. We have fellows, and our fellows will be using the device and, and performing them on the front end and then back in the cockpit. So um, it doesn't take any ex extra people to run the system. It takes somebody who's willing to touch wires and do a little bit more with wires than they're used yes. to doing. How many machines in the world? 
So we're currently in about 40 centers uh, mm. around the around the world. Mm. Um, outside the What's U.S., that? there's uh, there's one in Israel. Uh, there's and Dubai. There's one in Dubai. One in Somebody Dubai. Uh, um, uh, we just um, made an agreement with Mitsubishi in Japan. They're mm. going to purchase and distribute and train 12 mm. in, uh, throughout Japan. Oh, so. Japanese Better. operators interested in getting into robotics have a great opportunity. Or you just just for the fun What's for that? the patient. Is a special indication? I mean, I mean, this RT is for robotic or two artists for robotics. Or uh, I mean, that you said that CTO is not indicated, but otherwise it's indicated any vessel. Yeah, there's there's uh, if any case you can do without over the wire equipment, uh, you can can be done with can be done robotically. So I'd say 85% of the cases you currently do probably mm. would be it would be an applicable device. I don't know. May, may I ask you what um, you see at this stage and in a later stage as the major advantage? I can imagine that you are not uh, that especially the X-ray um, plays a major role. But uh, you also see an advantage in accuracy of placing the stand and things like and manipulating the wire in a later stage? There's some uh, evidence on longitudinal geographic miss, uh, which is markedly reduced with robotic precision compared to uh, manual and, and eyeball. Uh, the other advantage there, the, the theoretical advantage, is the screen is right there in front of your face instead of across the patient. You have really better visualization as well. So the major advantage is reduction in x-ray by 95% and you're not wearing lead and you have, a, you know, 40% of interventional cardiologists have orthopedic problems. So we should probably get back to the case and see where they are. Let's go back to uh, Y Hospital. You've got more, five more minutes, so can you okay. further explain what you have just done? So it looks like you got a very nice result, Dr. Doe. Are you going to... Yeah. Are you, are you uh, finished with the case or anything else left to do? No, we're just not in, in, in plan to... I don't know if they can hear us. Yes, uh, we are already in plan a 4 by 18 uh, uh, Firehawk synonymous looking stand. Uh, and uh, our next step is uh, part with a 4.5 by 8, right? Yeah. 4.5 by 8, small blue. Yeah. After part, we may uh, we may check the final hours. Hopefully, we can complete the procedure in five in in next five minutes. Okay, Dr. Zubo, personally, I think it's a very exciting uh, uh, experience to see the, the robotic PCI. It's uh, personally first, so everything is uh, so exciting. It's uh, fantastic. And the angiographic appearance thank, after the, the stand so point much. is uh, quite uh, good. Excellent. Uh, actually, I must uh, emphasize, uh, this is the 10th robotic assisted PCI case in Fuwa Hospital. And you can see uh, Dr. Do is already an expert. So just like Aaron said, it's very easy to learn. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, for the past, uh, I, I mean, the, uh, we did uh, several RCA case and sim uh, simple case, but uh, the, 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 the last five yeah, cases yeah. are relatively complex. Yeah, yeah. And today we huh? even touch uh, uh, osteo LED. Uh, you know, before the procedure, uh, huh? we, we think the most important challenge would be the uh, wire, wiring the angulated LED robotically. But however, I think the system work very well. Uh, I think I want to make some comment about the uh, robotic procedure. I think uh, at first uh, the operator must be an experienced uh, operator for PCI. And secondly, uh, the operator must uh, uh, have the experience to teach the fellows and, uh, and guide the fellows uh, through the screen uh, uh, angiography. And finally, uh, the, the operator had better had experience of playing game before. <laughs> uh, so th that's my, what I want to say. <laughs> but most importantly, I want to take this opportunity to thank 
all the friends from horrendous for helping us for, uh, working with us uh, and giving us this uh, great opportunity. Spider, Zhao Yijiang. In the interest of full disclosure, I'm the chief medical officer for Corindus, uh, and we appreciate your effort to use the device in something a little more exciting than we've ever seen before in a, uh, in a live case demonstration of robotics. This is the second live case demonstration of the GRX device in Asia, and uh, the CIT course case went beautifully, but it was very simple. This was a little more, more involved, and uh, congratulations on a, on a great case, and thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ivan. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to the uh, next uh, lecture session. I'd like to invite Dr. Uh, Taggart uh, to give a lecture entitled Left Main Disease Surgery is Still Standard. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So my remit today is to convince you that surgery is still the best treatment for most patients with left main. And thankfully, it's quite an easy job to do this, simply based on the evidence. But before I start, I would like to thank Dr. Park and the organizers for the privilege and opportunity of being here. And also to acknowledge that this is a very appropriate forum to talk about left main because of the enormous contributions made personally by Dr. Park and his team to what we understand about left main and how we can treat it. And these have been a very substantial body of contribution over the last decade. My only conflict of interest is I was the chairman of the surgical committee of the XL trial, and I will talk about that. If we're looking at the relative efficacy of PCI and cabbage in left main, there are always three key questions we should ask. What is the anatomical severity of disease? We need to know syntax scores if we are truly going to recommend the best evidence-based treatment. Secondly, what is the duration of follow-up? I will show you that it must be at least five years and ideally should be over 10 years because we know that the benefits of cabbage in terms of improved survival, reduced myocardial infarction, and repeat revascularization continue to increase with time, and anything less than five-year follow-up should simply be considered an interim analysis. And the third issue is the use of guideline-based medical therapy, because in most of the trials of PCI versus cabbage, the cabbage patients have received substantially inferior medical therapy in comparison to stent patients, and this leads to increased mortality and MACE in patients undergoing cabbage. In terms of the importance of survival, it's shown in the following slides. Whether we look at the randomized trials, like Syntax or Freedom, or the large propensity match registries, like ACERT and the New York registry, we can see that there is continuing divergence of survival curves at five years, suggesting at five years we're still underestimating the true benefit of cabbage. And if you followed these out to 10 years, we'd see just how superior cabbage is over the longer term. The other thing to be aware of is the patency of the internal mammary artery. We know that the patency of both ITA grafts out at 10 years of follow-up is over 90%, and that patency stays at 90% out to 20 years of follow-up. So for cabbage, we're really looking at the long-term benefits of this procedure. And I mentioned to you that cabbage patients often receive inferior medical therapy. If you look at the five-year outcome of the Syntax trial, both the stent patients and the cabbage patients did not receive optimal medical therapy, but it was substantially worse in the cabbage patients, which contributed to increased MACE and mortality in these patients. Now, back in 2008, myself with several co-authors reviewed all the evidence in the literature at that time, comparing stents and cabbage, and we concluded that cabbage should remain the preferred revascularization treatment in good surgical candidates with unprotected left main stenosis. And that was based on the pathophysiological observations that up to 90% of left main lesions are distal bifurcation lesions, 
and known to be at high risk of restenosis. And also, and more importantly, up to 90% of patients have also have multivessel disease, where cabbage already has a survival benefit independent of the presence of left main. But literally, two months after that, Dr. Park and his colleagues reported the main compare registry in the New England Journal of Medicine. They looked at 2,240 patients treated with stents or cabbage and followed only for three years. But at that time point, they concluded there were similar outcomes for death, the composite of death, MI and stroke, but a much greater need for target vessel revascularization with stents. If you look at the first of the trials to report five-year outcomes for left main, this was the Syntax trial published in circulation in 2014, and it showed that for a group of 705 patients, there was no difference between cabbage and PCI for MACE, for the composite of death stroke or MI, for all-cause death, for MI itself, but what it did report was a higher risk of stroke with cabbage, but a much reduced need for repeat revascularization. And when they divided this cohort into those with syntax scores above and below 32, there was a very clear difference. Below 32, there was absolutely no difference between cabbage and PCI. Above 33, cabbage was a clear winner. Now, there are a number of implications of this. The first is this was used to underpin the entry criteria to the XL trial. We only enrolled patients with scores less than 32. But it also suggested that perhaps if you have a low syntax score, it means that you do not have additional proximal coronary artery disease. And in that situation, there may be too much competitive flow for bypass grafts. Whereas with the higher syntax scores, it indicates patients with much more severe proximal coronary artery disease. And in this situation, cabbage patients are likely to do better. One year later was a five-year outcome of Dr. Park's pre-combat trial. 600 patients randomized. Note that the mean syntax score was 22, so very similar to the lower tertile of the syntax trial. And like that cohort in the syntax trial, there was no difference in death, MI. Cabbage was much better in reduced repeat revascularization. And interestingly, in this trial, there was no difference in stroke between PCI and cabbage. So if we now turn to the seminal landmark XL trial, this was 1,905 patients randomized to PCI or cabbage. It's crucial to note that patients in this trial had syntax scores below 33. And also, the follow-up is, I would argue, an interim analysis because it's only three years and not five years. But what did it show? It showed overall at three years, no difference in death, stroke, or myocardial infarction. It showed no difference in stroke between PCI and cabbage compared to the syntax trial. It showed no significant difference in myocardial infarction. But what is very important and what has been repeatedly not discussed at this meeting is what happened in terms of survival. If you look at five years, you can see that there is, I'm, I'm sorry, if you look at three years, you can see that there is a beginning of a divergence in survival in favor of cabbage. It comes to 2.4 percentage points, and it had a p-value of 0.06. So it just failed to reach statistical significance. But of course, what we need to know is, what will those survival curves look like at five years? And if you look at the Excel study in detail, to me, I would call this the money shot. If you look at what happened between randomization and 30 days for the composite of death stroke or MI, it was higher in cabbage, and significantly so. But it was not driven by death or stroke, which were the same. It was driven by a higher incidence of early myocardial infarction. And this is because of the new definition of biochemical definition of myocardial infarction. But if we look at what happened between 30 days and three years, we see a totally different picture. Now there is a significant increase in the risk of death, stroke, or MI with PCI, and it is statistically significant. And if you look at death itself, it is also increased in the PCI group and just fails to reach significance at 0.06. But remember, this is at three years. There was no difference in stroke, and in MI was now significantly lower for cabbage patients. 
Also with cabbage, significantly reduced repeat revascularization. So by three years in the XL trial, the overall cabbage mortality was actually 2.3% lower. But the crucial thing is, as I've said, is the survival curves are diverging in favor of cabbage. And I would be quite confident that by five years, there will be a highly significant benefit for cabbage over PCI in this cohort of patients. If you look at the NOBLE trial, it had a median follow-up to three years, but did follow a small proportion of patients out to five years. And here, cabbage was a clear winner again, with very marked divergence in MACE at five years, and with cabbage having lower mortality, myocardial infarction, repeat revascularization, and interestingly, a lower incidence of stroke. Now, that may be by play of chance, but that's what the numbers show. And this is the crucial slide to understand is why does cabbage continue to have a benefit, an important survival benefit for most patients with multivessel and left main disease. And it's first because anatomically atheroma is mainly located in the proximal, proximal coronary arteries. So by placing bypass grafts to the mid coronary vessel, it has two effects. It means that the complexity of the proximal culprit lesion is irrelevant. And it means that over the longer term, cabbage offers prophylaxis against future culprit lesions. In contrast, PCI only treats suitable localized proximal culprit disease, but has no prophylactic benefit against new disease. The second difference is the internal mammary artery. Tom Lusher showed three decades ago in the New England Journal of Medicine that the internal mammary artery elutes nitric oxide into the coronary circulation. And this reduces the risk of further disease development in the native coronary artery. In contrast, drug eluting stents placed in our proximal coronary vessel, they impair re-endothelialization, they cause downstream endothelial function, and they create a prothrombotic environment. And the third reason is PCI often means incomplete revascularization. And it's been repeatedly shown over the last decade that incomplete revascularization leads to a subsequent increase in mortality and in MACE. So I would argue that for these three reasons, PCI is unlikely to ever match the results of cabbage for most patients with multivessel and left main disease. And you hear this repeated mistake that every time cabbage is shown to be superior to PCI, the cardiologist always responds, but now we have a new stent. When cabbage was better than balloon angioplasty, the cardiologist said, that's because we didn't use bare metal stents. When cabbage was better than bare metal stents, the cardiologist argued, that's because we didn't use drug eluting stents. And when cabbage was better than drug eluting stents, the cardiologist said, we used the wrong kind of drug eluting stent. But if you follow these three mechanisms, this is why cabbage has remained superior to all types of stenting, even with new developments that actually improve the stent. The other thing I've emphasized is the importance of complete revascularization. This was shown by Patrick Saroys and colleagues in this publication in 2016. If a patient has incomplete revascularization with left main, it increases the risk of all-cause death, cardiac death, myocardial infarction, repeat revascularization, definite or probable stent thrombosis, and overall MACE. So if you look, what do the guidelines say for left main? If we look at the European guidelines from 2010 to 2014, we can see that cabbage remains a class one indication for all types of left main, but the 2014 guidelines upgraded the indication for PCI for syntax scores below 22 from 2AB to 1B, and from 23 to 32 from 2BB to 2A. But I would suggest that when we get the five-year results of Excel and Noble, we will be downgrading again the indication for PCI in these patients. The next question for cabbage, are all left mains operable? And the answer is yes. And how should we do cabbage? Well, it depends because there is left main disease and there is left main disease. In this angiogram, it shows complex left main equivalent disease. This patient would have a high syntax score and this patient would do very well with three arterial grafts because it would be very little competitive flow. In contrast, in this patient with an osteal left main, there would be very low syntax score. And the question is, how many bypass grafts would you use? 
Would there be a single internal mammary artery to the LED? Would you add something to the circumflex system? Because what really worries the surgeon in this situation is the risk of competitive flow, which is damaging to arterial grafts. And a patient like this would do extremely well with PCI. So if I summarize and conclude in 2017, when we compare PCI versus cabbage, we need to know about syntax scores, we need to know what was the duration of follow-up, and we need to know about the use of guideline-based medical therapy. The previous concept that left main is exclusive surgical disease is no longer viable, and this has been shown in numerous studies, particularly syntax and pre-combat. Cabbage is, however, a clear winner for most three-vessel disease and for left mains above 32, and that's despite the fact the cabbage patients received substantially inferior medical therapy and would have had the better results had they received optimal medical therapy. Cabbage is a clear winner at five years in the NOBEL trial. At three years, there is currently equipoise for PCI in cabbage in the composite endpoint in Excel, but be aware of those diverging survival curves, and we really need to see the five-year outcomes. Completeness of revascularization is crucial in left main disease if we're going to have optimal figures for mortality in MACE, and PCI may produce superior results in isolated osteal and mid-shaft left main without additional proximal coronary artery disease where there is excessive competitive flow for bypass grafts. On that point, I'm going to conclude my talk. I'd like to thank Dr. Park and the organizers again for the opportunity to be here and you, the audience, for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tegart, uh, for your excellent uh, lecture. Thank you. Uh, now this topic is for discussion. Yeah. Uh, I, I noted that in 2008 you are the only surgeon and a lot of conservative uh, intervention cardiology with you. That's right? Correct. Uh, okay. Yes. The second, I need your opinion about the recent paper that the mammary arteries are, are inferior to softness grafts with the one mammary. It's, uh, the, uh, and in the Excel and Nobel, or even the syntax, the graft occlusion of the softness graft at one year equal to or more than stent thrombosis. So how do you explain that the cabbage is the winner, although that you have a stent, you have, a, you have difference in your uh, in, 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 in explanations of the, of the arterial graft versus venous, and the venous will close after one year. So how can you explain that you are a clear winner? So, so most vein, vein graft failures within one year are usually the result of technical mistakes during an operation. That is not law. But if you look at great vein graft failure over the next five years, it remains about 2 to 3% per year, and then it accelerates from 5 to 10 years. So we have very good angiographic evidence on the long-term follow-up of vein grafts, radial arteries, and internal thoracic arteries. And as I showed you, at 10 years, the perfect patency of vein grafts would be around 40% in comparison to 95% for the ITA and about 90% for the radial artery. So we know this data very well. And therefore, when we would expect to see the benefit of arterial grafts more over the longer term. Yeah, uh, David, thank you uh, for that nice talk. Why do you think it is, despite all these data that you and others have generated showing the benefit of full arterial revascularization, we can't convince our surgeons, at least in the United States, to do this? Well, not only can you not convince them, even I can't convince them now. Because we, when we published in the New England Journal the five-year outcomes of the ART trial, which was a randomized trial of 3,000 patients to single or bilateral ITA grafts, at five years, there was identical survival. Now, the fact that we pointed out this was an interim analysis because the primary outcome of the ART trial is 10 years, nevertheless, surgeons immediately said, oh, well, there's no point of two ITA graphs. But there are other things about that trial that are important. The use of guideline-based medical therapy was extraordinarily high. At five years, 90% of patients were on aspirin, beta blockers, and statins. So that may have reduced vein graft failure. And we have a paper accepted for circulation showing that 20% of the, the patients also had a radial artery 
in the ART trial, and this significantly reduced the risk of MACE at five years. So there were other things happening in that trial, but my own view is, because of what we know about the angiographic difference in patency between veins and arteries over the long term, I believe that with longer term follow-up, we will see a difference. David, you invoked three different hypotheses or mechanisms for these differences and outcomes between PCI and surgery, and the one that I think is most relevant is the completeness of revascularization. I'll provide some commentary, and then I wonder what I would like to hear what you have to think about it, because uh, the first thing I should do is offer an upfront apology, because we're going to take you down with us in the ischemia trial, because patients in the ischemia trial, 80% of whom are being treated with PCI, 20% of whom have a chronic total occlusion, are not getting the ischemia-causing chronic total occlusion treated. And when the core lab asked them why not, the typical response is because the patient's not having symptoms, which isn't the point of the I trial. Yep. And when Greg Stone sent out an email to ask people to send those people preferentially to surgery, nothing changed. So uh, I, think the, I think you don't need to invoke the magical vapors of the IMA. You should be calling out the interventional cardiologists who can't offer complete revascularization and keep leaving people under revascularized. And I think the whole issue is the competency of the average surgeon enrolling in these trials at obtaining complete revascularization far exceeds the average competency uh, of the interventional cardiologists that are enrolling in these trials. And we just really haven't t ever really tested the hypothesis. Yeah. So, so two things, uh, we can have this debate, but I have absolutely no question if a patient is a revascularized with arterial grafts and has two patent mammary arteries at 20 years, that that patient is no better off than somebody with chronic ischemia. I simply won't, wouldn't accept that. The second thing I'll say is there's some confusion about the term complete revascularization when we talk about surgery. So there are two types of incomplete revascularization. There is appropriate incomplete revascularization <coughs> and there is inappropriate incomplete revascularization. So we never get inappropriate complete revascularization during cabbage. No surgeon leaves a big vessel ungrafted if it's got significant disease. But with PCI, you may not be able to technically get a good, good result, or you may not be able to open a chronic total occlusion. So there you have inappropriate incomplete revascularization. At operation, a surgeon may leave a 1.25 millimeter coronary vessel, especially if it's subtending an already infarcted area, and that's appropriate not to. So for surgery, the, while we often read in the journals about incomplete revascularization, it, fairly, it rarely ever distinguishes what is appropriate incomplete revascularization and what is inappropriate incomplete revascularization. But, but David, I, I think you should pursue that. Um, it's a very easy statement to make that surgeons always graft appropriate and large vessels. But, uh, you know, I can tell you we catheterize a lot of patients who are post-op. We look at branches that we consider to be very large, and they've never been grafted, e even though the patient may have other grafts. Uh, I don't really know how frequently that occurs. Uh, I think, uh, you know, probably as part of art, you ought to do that. You ought, you ought to get us that answer and get that for your fellow surgeons. I think that's very important for us yeah. to know. Well, I, I could not in my t almost 30 years experience ever have witnessed an operation or seen a surgeon intentionally leave an important, significantly diseased uh, vessel yes, alone. But, but the operative word is intentionally. Yeah. Or the surgeon may disagree with us uh, as to how important that branch may be. I mean, you, can look, the, you can look at the uh, syntax trial where the heart team agreed the patient was a candidate for complete revascularization with both strategies, and both surgeons and cardiologists failed to graft chronic total occlusions. They're typically shrunken, you know, negatively remodeled vessels, and the reason the surgeons stated were, um, you know, small vessels, uh, and they're clearly subtending large territories. So there's, there's evidence that they're not grafted. Okay, thank you for the active discussion. Well, we have much to talk about the left main disease, but uh, we have to move on to the next lab session. I'd like to ask Dr. S.J. Buck to moderate next session. Thank you.